we have another segment on the offender's lab. It's a sign outside his lab door. Oh, and look it, there's Steve Brown. Hello there. Hey, welcome to the uh, GNL factory. We're here on Fender Avenue in Fullerton, California, and we're in Leo's lab. So the, uh, the lab here, Leo did a lot of work right up until the time he died. So the calendar on the wall once again shows you that was the one that was right when he died in March of 1991. But down below here on this workbench, you can see a lot of the things that Leo was working on really right up until the time that he passed away, and a lot of it was pickups. Leo loved pickup design, guitar electronics. And I'll show you real quickly what he would do with all of these different pickups, the way they're mounted to those pieces of wood. Leo had a couple of these. We kind of call a test bed. I mean, I was fortunate enough in my uh, early years working in the musical instrument business, I worked for Fender, and one of the people that was there at the time was Freddie Tavares, Leo's longtime partner and design assistant. In Freddie's office, he had the original Fender versions of this, where you have a bridge, a neck, and this plate down here. And what Leo would do, both at GNL and in the early days at Fender, these would sit down like this, and the pickups could be placed right under the strings this way. So this is one of the things how they not only listened to what the pickups were going to sound like, but they could determine the pickup placement. So if you look right over here on this board, you can see there's lines, there's holes that have been drilled in this, whereas they were working on pickup location, they might be doing this and We've heard that Leo would spend time, like hours per day, he had a 100 watt Music Man amp, and he would sit in here and just strum the string. Remember, Leo Fender didn't play, and every morning he'd have one of the production guys come in and tune the guitar, and he'd just strum away, and they could start moving these. So depending on where you put the pickup, you're going to hear different overtones, different tonalities, and they were able to say, okay. Great, so some science went into it, some trial and error. That's sort of the beauty of the whole thing. Now you look at a design like this for testing, pickup location. A lot of people have asked in the early days of Fender, even some of the GNL guitars, how did they come up with the idea of putting a pickup at an angle? Well, no one's exactly sure, but when you look at the design of this fixture, someone could easily say, oh, wow, well, the pickup's like this. What happens if we turn it a little bit? just like that. So maybe that's how they came up with the angle on a Telecaster pickup or a Stratocaster pickup or a ASAT Classic pickup or an ASAT Special pickup. Just being able to have a fixture where you could move something around might have been the key to the whole thing. And if I had never seen the original uh, fender tooling like this, might not have tied into going, oh yeah, I kind of understand. But you can see all the different pickups that Leo was working on. Here's an example of a, uh, uh, a five-string bass pickup where he's even put a, a capacitor in here so as he has it plugged into the amp he can switch it in and out and hear the different tonalities of doing that. Here's a, uh, here's a DiMarzio humbucker that he had. So Leo was listening to what other companies were doing. We have a drawing here in our uh, collection from the George and Leo collection from 1985 of an ASAT body that actually specifies on the drawing Seymour Duncan pickups. So Leo was very, very aware of what all the other people in the industry were doing and was either trying to borrow some ideas, just listening to what are they doing, what do I want to do that's different. Uh, very interesting. Here's a, again, some odd prototype things. You can see all the pole pieces on that. But these are all basically the MF the magnetic field design pickups that we're still using today. He was able to spin that off into a num number of different things, whether they be uh, ASAT pickups, S500 pickups, any of the base pickups, some of the uh, early prototypes. Here's a early prototype of a pickup that ended up in the uh, SB1 and SB2. Well, instead of the more elegant pole pieces used right now. Here just has large screws in it, so this is a real early prototype of the, uh, the SB base pickup. And the other wonderful thing that you find in here is Leo's collection of parts. 
The man had millions of dollars, but he still would bring in the planter's peanut cans from home. And in here would be some collection of stuff. And I'm sure if anybody walked in and took that spring out of there, there would be hell to pay, because he probably had that. So, you know, to kind of get a shot here, there's peanut cans, here's probably a, a cat food can that has a wonderful little assortment of springs and screws. And most of these are pickup parts. And there's a, a suit can a little bit there, but this was his filing system. Over in the, the corner here, we have a very nice, very industrial looking uh, a cabinet with bins for parts in it. Most of that's empty. Leo much preferred having his, his planter's peanut cans out for his parts storage. He could have them right where he was working, and uh, I think he got a, a warm, fuzzy feeling having the things all that close. So, another little glimpse into the, uh, the back workings of GNL. Thanks for watching. Go to glguitars.com, learn more about what's going on over here. Thank you.